Good morning, everybody, and happy Palm Sunday to you as we come together to celebrate and worship our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're glad that you've joined us online this morning, and if you're a guest, we're glad that you've joined us. I know with everything that's happening with the social distancing and everyone required to primarily stay home, uh, we haven't had the chance to meet you face-to-face, but we look forward to that day coming, so we're glad that you've joined us today. Make sure you fill out a My Response card. We'll get into that here in just a minute. Um, if you're a if you're a regular attender of our church, I've really missed seeing you. <laughs> um, I I know every Sunday morning I've come into the sanctuary here and it's just been weird. And I'm looking forward to the day when we can all come back together and celebrate and worship. But uh, whether you're new, whether you've been coming to our church for years, welcome. We're glad you've joined us online here today. Just a few reminders as we get started in our worship today. Don't forget about our My Response card, and there's two places where you can find the My Response card. Um, One of them is online. If you go to our church's website, www.4c.church, and you look at the very top, there's there's a menu. Toward the top, there's a menu that says This Weekend, and when you click on that, it'll bring up a sub menu. And uh, you'll be able to then click click on this weekend there, and it will give you all the information about what's happening in our service today, as well as give you links on how you can fill out your My Response card. And if you're wondering what our My Response card is, it's just simply a way for us to know that you were in attendance with us today, and also to connect with us if you need prayer, if you need uh, help with anything um, there, there at home where you're at. Um, that's what the My Response card is. So we want to invite everybody to fill that out. And if you have the church app, you can also do it through the church app. Now, we are still waiting on Apple and Google to uh, approve an update to our app. Everything is just way behind because of everything that's happening. So we'll make sure we let you know when that app becomes available. If you already have the app, you're good to go. You can use it uh, it's it's fully usable, but if you don't already have the app and you want to download it, it's not quite available yet, but you can go to our website and still fill out the My Response card, as well as the prayer card, which we'll bring up here next. We want to invite you to fill out our prayer card. Again, you go to the My Response, excuse me, you go to the um, website, or you can use the app and fill out a prayer card, and we pray for those still every Tuesday. We've been conference calling and uh, it's just been a powerful time of prayer, so we want to invite you to fill one of those out and get those into us here today before, um, before our service is over. Um, what's happening this week? Well, of course, with everything that's going on, it, our schedules are just radically different. But this week is a busy one, and it's an important one. This is Holy Week, as it's often called, and it's the week where we celebrate the in, in anticipation of, of course, on Friday was the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and then his resurrection on Easter Sunday. And so uh, we are going to have a few more activities take place this week than what we've normally had over these last few weeks. Um, but we will still have our normal activities. Like for, So, for instance, our online prayer service at 6 o'clock tonight, that will still take place, as well as our online life group on Wednesday at 7. Then, of course, on Friday we will have our Good Friday service. And speaking of our Good Friday service... Um, That's going to be an amazing time of just contemplation, worship, and celebration. It's going to be at 7 o'clock. Travis is going to be leading in that time. I'm really excited uh, to be able to just stop and remember what it is that Jesus did for us. So our Good Friday um, celebration is going to be different, obviously, than what we've done before. But we're still going to do it, and we're still going to take that time to stop and reflect on what Jesus did. So that is this Friday at 7 o'clock. And and I want to encourage you to share these on Facebook, to send a text to a friend, um, and just remind people of all the activities we have going on this week that just because we're stuck at home doesn't mean we can't still celebrate. Obviously, this Holy Week and this Easter is going to be different from any other Easter we've ever experienced. But that doesn't mean that we still can't worship. We can worship our Savior and His resurrection this week. So that's what we're going to do uh, starting on Good Friday at 7 o'clock. And then next Sunday morning at 8 a.m., we are still going to have our sunrise service. And I'm super excited about this because it's going to be on location. 
So we want to invite you uh, 8 o'clock Sunday morning to join in with us. We're going to sing some of the traditional hymns that we often sing at our sunrise service as well as I'm going to be sharing uh, for about 15 or 20 minutes. As we are on location, and we are actually going to be welcoming a sunrise outside. So we want to invite you to come to that. Again, invite those online to join with us. That will be at 8 o'clock next Sunday morning. And then... Of course, we are going to have a very special celebration next Sunday at 10 a.m. online for Easter, the most important day of the year for us as Christians as we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior and what that means for us. And I'm going to be sharing about hope, how we can find hope in the resurrection in the midst even of everything that we're going through. We're also going to have some special surprises that we're really looking forward to um, sharing with you that morning. Um, So again, we want to encourage you to come and just worship with us and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus on on Easter Sunday, but of course through some of the other activities that we're going to be uh, participating in here this week. So again, a busy week, a lot going on, and make sure you stay connected to us here. Uh, And again, I've already mentioned we will have our online prayer service tonight, as well as on Wednesday, we will have Life Group Live with Travis and I, and we'll, we'll be talking about Um, self-control this coming week. So again, we're glad that you've joined us in worship today. And now let's uh, let us just raise our hearts and our minds to Jesus as Travis and his team. I'm excited this week we have a team leading us in worship as they lead us all in worship. The next day, the great crowd that had gathered heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. This crowd praised him. They celebrated his miracles and with great expectation told everyone about him. But they did not know him. They were waiting for someone who would rule with strength and might. But he came as a humble servant. They wanted him to finally bring their people glory, but he wanted to change them so their lives would bring God glory. They were expecting a general who would crush their enemies, but he came saying, love your enemies. They thought he could offer them deliverance from their oppressors, but he came offering deliverance from sin. This crowd would soon realize that Jesus wasn't going to be what they wanted, and they turned on him before they ever realized he was what they needed. So as they yelled, crucify, Pilate asked Jesus, are you a king? Jesus answered, I am not that kind of king. His kingdom isn't what you see here. It won't be established by chaos and war. His kingdom is in our hearts. His kingdom is truth. His kingdom is goodness. His kingdom is righteousness. He is the humble king, the king of healing, the king of forgiveness, the king of love. Today, we lift our voices. We cry, Hosanna, save us. Save us from our sin. Come dwell in our hearts. Hosanna, we worship you. Jesus Christ, our king. Good morning, everybody, and happy Palm Sunday to you. I figured after the last few weeks that you're probably a little bit tired of just seeing me and just hearing me. So this morning, Hannah and Ben are joining us. We're going to sing this first song, which is very appropriate for Palm Sunday. Hosanna. Praise is rising. Eyes are
when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our prayers. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in no is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that I would be set I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. 
It's amazing when we stop to think about Palm Sunday and think about the events of that day, how everybody celebrated Jesus as a king entering, entering the city. And then those same voices went in just a few short days from shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, to crucify him. And he knew that was going to happen and he did it anyway. That was all part of his plan all part of God's plan to provide us with grace, to provide us with the grace that gives us forgiveness for our sins today. Amazing grace, how sweet sound it saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now am found but blind but now I see soon is all like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever Red. 
We've now come to our time this morning where we stop and reflect and remember what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross during this time of communion. Of course, during this time of social distancing, distancing and online worship services, we have to do communion just a little bit differently. Like I've mentioned the last couple of weeks, one way you can do that is by visualizing taking the bread in the cup. Another thing that you can do is use crackers and grape juice. Maybe if you've had a chance to go to the store or if you've already got it in your home, you can prepare yourself communion before our service every week and take that um, during this time. We are still waiting to hear back from a company that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that provides prepackaged communion packets. Um, we'll let you know if or even when we're going to get those. Um, we're still hoping to, but as of now, uh, we have not received them as yet. You know, during our communion time today, I wanted to share for just a minute about a, a picture uh, that really touched my heart this week, and it's this one. This is a picture of a field hospital that sits in Central Park that has been provided by Samaritan's Purse. Now, if you don't know about Samaritan's Purse, Samaritan's Purse is an organization, a Christian organization, that provides help in the worst of moments in people's lives. They go to natural disasters, they go into um, war-torn areas, and provide health care to those who are in need. And this week, they were able to set up a field hospital, like I've already mentioned, there in Central Park, as they're helping those in New York battle the COVID-19 outbreak. They ran to the problem. They didn't run from it. And as Christians, we need to remember that as well, that even in the midst of this time when we've been asked by our government and community leaders to social distance, that we can still reach out to one another and run to people and, watch and, and care for people even online. I know we even have a lot of healthcare workers within our church and community that are physically on the front line, and we need to lift them up in prayer, and I'm so grateful um, for them and what they're doing. But you know, as, as I thought back 2,000 years ago, this week is Holy Week, and, and what Holy Week reminds me of in this year, in the situation that we are in, is that Jesus didn't run from the fray. He didn't run from our pain and our suffering. As a matter of fact, God himself got in the mix of it in Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 5, it says this, but there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the, son of this, the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Jesus ran to us. He came to us to save us. And so here in these next few moments, let us stop and reflect on what he has done. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, God, we come to you today and we thank you for running to us, for coming to us and saving us when we didn't even know you, that you came and died on a cross for our sins. And Father, during these next few moments, as we give our gratitude, and as we examine ourselves and look at ourselves and, and see the sin in our lives, God, we also celebrate and thank you for the grace that we now have. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll just take a few moments here to stop and reflect, and then I will lead us in the taking of communion.
on the night that Jesus was arrested, when he was in the upper room with his disciples, which we will remember here this Thursday, on Monday Thursday, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he said, take, eat, for this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood, which has been shed for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Father, we thank you for the wonderful cross, the one that has saved us, the one has redeemed us, restored us, and got an anticipation of what happened on Easter Sunday, the one that will also resurrect us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we get on to our message today, I do want to remind you about our giving. Uh, we want to invite you to give, and um, there are three ways for us to give that I think is important to us uh, to remember in all this. You can still give your gift um, directly. You can give it through our mail. Uh, that You can just send it to 106 West Church Street, and we will pick that up. We, we get those every day. You can also do that online. You can go to our church's website, 4C.Church, and it says give. You can give through that medium, or you can give by text. So we want to encourage you to do that um, as we continue to support our community and help our community and continue our ministry. Okay, well, let's get into today's message. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we want to welcome you um, again online as we're worshiping today. Um, you know, I wanted to thank Travis and I know uh, Hannah and Ben for leading us in worship. I know it's kind of been a crazy time from uh, the perspective of everything Travis is doing and getting all the, the videos and everything uh, edited and prepared. And so I just wanted to thank him. And, um, you know, it, it's been a crazy few weeks here, hasn't it? But here we are, and today is Palm Sunday, and although our message today is going to be more in line with our belief series and what we're uh, talking about is self-control today, but uh, we do want to celebrate Palm Sunday, and just a reminder that this week is Holy Week, and it's going to be the most different Holy Week um, that we've ever experienced because, well, obviously we can't get together, so there are going to be a series of events that will be online this week, so be on the lookout. You can watch here on Facebook. Um, we'll also send out some texts uh, to let you know what's happening. And by the way, if you are not receiving our texts from the church, we want to invite you to uh, just shoot us an email or send us send me a text. Uh, you could send an email to cccc at 4c.church or send me a text at 765-541-0523, and we will add you to the list for our text because we send out a lot of links to our messages, to Life Group Live, to our online prayer service, as well as, well as other things that are happening, so we really want to keep you connected. So just let us know, and we'll get you on that group text. Um, again, if you're visiting us today online, we want to welcome you. I know it's been really cool the last few weeks to see a lot of visitors join us, and we're glad that you're joining us online. Hopefully, you'll get to join us in person one day, right? Um, and, uh, and those of you that are regular attenders at our church, I want you to know we miss you. Um, I tell you, it has been really strange for me to come in here on Sunday mornings, and it's just empty. And, and it's strange, but it reminds me, though, that... The church is not the building. The church is the people. What makes this building feel alive isn't the seats, isn't the, the lights in the, in the building itself. It's you. It's us, the people, when we come together. And so hopefully before too long, uh, we'll be back together. Um, it's, we'll, we'll get there, right? <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, just a couple other things I wanted to go through before I get into the message. It's just kind of a, a COVID-19 update. Um, we just wanted to kind of keep you in the know, know about what's going on. Um, so I'll tell you, our church is stepping up. Um, last week, our food pantry helped around 100 families in our community. We're actually trying to figure out ways right now to get more food. Um, many of the grocery stores are having difficulty getting extra food beyond 
what they would normally give out as a business. And so we're trying to find some different sources in order to be able to make to make that happen. So just be patient. We're hoping, though, to be able to do another food pantry here soon. Um, something else that was really cool um, this past week was we've, we've just been in, inundated by clothing. <laughs> and we finally just had to say we can't take more donations because we sort through all the clothing um, before we prepare it for distribution. Well, uh, this past week, I know that uh, some of the extra clothing that we had uh, was taken over to the schools when they were distributing breakfast and lunches for the kids this week. And that was just so cool to be able to help uh, families with clothing through that. So again, we want to thank you through that. And something else I'm really excited uh, to mention, you might have seen it on the video that we put out uh, earlier this week about ways that we're helping. Um, our church has given $1,000 to CRAM, which is Christ Reaching Asia Ministry. Now you may think, well, that's kind of weird. They're, they do ministry over in Asia. Well, they're really doing a really cool thing right now. What they're going to do is they have access to medical supplies over in Asia that they're now going to be sending here to the United States. And so we're really excited to be able to donate $1,000 to that effort to be able to, to get some more supplies here into the United States to be able to support our medical uh, professionals as they continue to fight on the front lines with this virus. So, um, so again, there's a lot happening, a lot that we're trying to do, and of course, we're always open to any other ideas, just let us know. Um, we're going to be continuing with our online services, at least through the end of April, it looks like. Um, of course, don't forget we have our prayer service tonight, and then Life Group Live that also takes place on Wednesday night. So these are some ways for us to stay connected, and I want to just continue to encourage you to stay connected in the middle of all this. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into our message today, and we'll start off with this question as we review what we talked about last week. If you remember, we talked about peace. We talked about how we can find peace here in the midst of the storm, and that Jesus is in the boat with us, that we're not alone. He's riding this storm with us, and he's willing to rise up in that boat, in our hearts, right? He's willing to rise up, and he's willing to say, peace be still to the storm that we're in, but we have to invite him to do that. And, and so I guess what I'm asking is, have you done that this week? Have you invited Jesus to bring peace to the storm that you're in? I hope so, because I think what we can find, even in the midst of everything that's happening around us, that we can find that peace that passes all understanding because of what Jesus has done for us. And of course, this week with Holy Week coming up, uh, we're going we're gonna to be remembering uh, that, that Thursday night, Maundy Thursday, right, and what he did when he gave us communion, when he gave us a reminder of his body and his blood. Then, of course, Good Friday was the day that our sin was taken away, and we sell, we're going to celebrate that on Friday night. We're actually uh, planning to have an online worship service uh, for that. And then, of course, next Sunday is Easter, and, um, and we're really excited about that. Even though it's going to be weird without us all here, um, we're going to be able to do a sunrise service on location as well as celebrate uh, the arrival, and, or excuse me, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So again, uh, we're, we're looking forward to that. So are we going to choose peace or over fear? Have you done that? You know, over these last few weeks, we've been going through the fruits of the Spirit. We've gone through love. We've gone through joy. We've gone through peace. And today we're talking about self-control. Now this, this may seem kind of like a weird topic, uh, to talk about in the midst of everything that's going on, but really it's not. If, if you think about it, love, joy, peace, and self-control, they're really all interconnected, and they speak, I think, vividly <laughs> to what we're going through right now. We need this with some of the things that are coming from staying at home. By being at home, it can sometimes be harder, I think, to be uh, self-controlled. You know, a couple things uh, that I know that I've been trying to work on myself about self-control is to not stress eat. I know there's a, a lot of people that when they get stressed out, what they do is they eat, they eat, they eat. And that's the thing that I've had to be careful of and I'm trying to check myself on. Um, I think another thing that, that comes down to self-control in all of this is not letting my attitude get poor. You know, when you're stuck inside a lot, when you can't do a lot of the things that you like to do, um, it's really easy for your attitude to stink uh, towards your family members and toward others. So again, it's not, it's not easy to have that kind of self-control in the midst of the circumstances that we're in. And so 
so again, you know, we, we have to decide, are we going to allow the circumstances to control us, or are we going to harness this situation for the glory of God? Will we use this situation in order to glorify God and allow him to grow us for our own good? And so, so that's, that's really what we're getting at here today as we're talking about self-control. Okay, so we're, we'll, uh, we're going to continue on here. Um, so I don't know about you, but ice cream for me, here's a picture for you, and I hope this isn't like making you hungry, although it's the morning, ice cream's usually not a morning thing, right? But, but maybe ice cream for you is a weakness. I know that ice cream is for me. Now, let me tell you this. I have the worst <laughs> route home every day from leaving the church. So, so I leave here from the church, and I drive home. And as I'm driving home, I'm driving down 40, and I'm driving toward Dublin. And what is about halfway between here and my house? Hilltop is between here and the house. So every time I go past Hilltop, I'll see people standing in line out there waiting for their ice cream. And let me tell you, it can be really tempting for me to just stop and just say, oh, it'll be all right, you can get some ice cream today. And, I'm, and of course, I'm sure uh, Becky that owns Hilltop would say, just stop right in and Danny. But if I did that every day, that wouldn't be a very healthy thing to do. Plus, where, where would my self-control be? You know, I, I know that if I've ever had ice cream at home, usually within three days it's gone. And, and sometimes I will say this, my self-control um, <laughs> isn't always there because there's been a few times, I hope my kids aren't listening, um, there's been a few times that Adrienne and I sneak out to get some ice cream by ourselves sometimes. Now, when you hear me talking like this, it kind of, it kind of sounds a little bit like I'm a ice cream junkie, and I guess I kind of am a little bit. (laughs) I am a little bit of an ice cream junkie. But you know what? Maybe ice cream is not your kryptonite, but let me say this today, and, and maybe something else for you is. Right now, what are you turning to in the circumstances that we are in that is controlling you? Maybe you're trying to hoard resources. Maybe you're sitting on edge with all the news, and, and the news is controlling you. I know this week that uh, Adriana and I got into a little disagreement about everything with the coronavirus, and, and that's just crazy, you know, because we're allowing the circumstance to control uh, our interactions and our relationships. You know what, we all have an area of two or two or more um, in which we lack self-control. We all struggle with this in some area. You know, in Romans chapter 7, verse 15, it says this, I don't really understand myself. This is the Apostle Paul writing this. I don't really understand myself for what I, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it, and instead I do what I hate. You know what, we try really hard to control ourselves. We go and we see counselors and try to receive advice. Sometimes we blame others as a way of trying to grasp and bring control into our own lives. And so many times, what do we do? We eventually give up on self-control because we think it's hopeless, that we just can't do it. Kind of like what Paul here is saying in verse 15. And then in verse 18 he says, and I know that nothing good lives in me. That is my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. You know, the, the, the problem that we have with self-control is that we have a sin nature. And let me tell you, boy, it can really show up in times like we're in right now. We've seen a very big lack of self-control in a lot of situations where people have become hoarders and they've become selfish, where they're focused only on themselves and they forget about other people. Our sin nature, as Paul talks about here in verse 18, is where this problem of self-control comes. So this brings up this question that we have to answer here today. How do we cultivate self-control? How do we cultivate it? Well, first... I think we have to ask, what is self-control? And and here's a simple definition. You have self-control when you are able to do what you intend to do and resist what you don't want to do. See, self-control is is something that doesn't come naturally to us. Our sinful nature tends to be selfish. And it's about us and about me and about what I can get. And, and so self-control is not a natural thing. And really, in so many ways, it's supernatural, and it comes only from God. 
In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23, it says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, we've talked about that, right? Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and what? Gentleness and self-control. There is no law against these things. See, we, we cannot be self-controlled on our own. If, if we go back to verse 22, look what it says here. It says again in verse 22. <clears throat> in verse 22. There it is. It says this. But the Holy Spirit produces this. It is the Holy Spirit that produces self-control. Right? And, and I think sometimes we think if we just try hard enough, if we try, if we do enough, then somehow we can get that self-control on our own, that we can figure it out on our own. If we go into verse 23, again, we see more of these gifts that he's talking about. These are things that come from the Holy Spirit. So see, in the middle of what we're in, we cannot work harder on ourselves. We think, oh, if I can do some more self-help, if I could, uh, a lot of Eastern religion and Eastern thought teaches that you have to empty yourself. Well, the Bible teaches the opposite. The Bible tells us that we have to fill ourselves, and we have to fill ourselves with Christ. We have to let Jesus Christ get a hold of us. So again, I think that this situation that we're in right now, this is a, a time of opportunity. It's a time of opportunity for us to grow in our faith. In Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 13, it says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. <clears throat> and we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward with hope to what wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. You know, and here, here's kind of what it, what's being said here in Titus, and I think this is what's key to what we're talking about today, and it's this. To be self-controlled, we must give up control. See, if we want to be self-controlled, and it almost seems <laughs> like a misnomer, right? Like it's something that doesn't match up. But, but this is the fact. If we are going to be people that are filled with self-control, filled by the Holy Spirit with self-control, we have to give up control. So here is something that sounds strange in the question I'm asking, but yet I think, just, just hang in there with me, follow with me on this, all right? And that, the question is this, how do we get, notice it's in quotations, how do we get control? How do we find control in the midst of everything that's going on in our lives right now, in this situation that we find ourselves in with the COVID-19, and just life in general, right? Like, how do we get control? And the first thing is this one, we have to let the Holy Spirit control you. You have to let the Holy Spirit control you. You have to let go so that God can take control. In Galatians chapter 5, 5 verse 16, it says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Notice that? Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. See, the more space we give in our lives for the Holy Spirit to move into our hearts and to transform our minds and our hearts and our actions, see, the easier it is then to, to, to fight against those things that our sinful nature craves. Um, some, of the, some of the things our sinful nature has craved is power and control and all these different things over the last few weeks. And again, we, we, we've got to be really careful with that. We have to realize that indeed, the sinful nature wants to take control. It wants to take control. Can we go back to the previous slide? There we go. But there are all sorts of reasons, though, why we can't let go of these things. There are a lot of reasons why we can't let go, why we can't let our sinful nature, uh, you know, take the back seat. And one of them is pride. Pride is, is something that really gets in the driver's seats of our lives, and it, and it becomes about me and not about God. In Proverbs chapter 18, it says this, haughtiness goes before destruction, humility precedes honor. Let me read that again, haughtiness or pride goes before destruction. Humility precedes honor. Let me tell you, this verse has been borne out in my life multiple times. Some of you know, I've mentioned this before, I really hate asking people for directions. 
I, I don't like to do that. I don't like, like if I'm going somewhere and I'm lost, I don't like to pull over in a gas station. I know a lot of guys are this way. And let me tell you, that pride has brought, maybe not like full-on life destruction, but it's brought destruction to the situation that I'm in because I've been too prideful to ask for help. Humility precedes honor. If, if you ask for help, if you're humble, then, then what can happen? Then people are like, wow, he was willing to ask and get us to the right place. That, that's something I've got to work on. But see, the reason I don't ask is because I think I can do it on my own. I think that I can figure it out. Or maybe it just comes down to I don't want people to know that I don't know. There's a pride and there's an arrogance that comes in that. You know, right now in the situation that we find ourselves in, maybe you've been tempted to have pride when it comes to the direction that we're, we're hearing from uh, civil authorities and whatnot. We, we think that we're wiser than everyone else, and our pride can come before our destruction. You know, it's been very disappointing to me to see uh, different uh, organizations that have continued to, to make decisions that pe- pe- put people at risk. And, it, and a lot of it, I believe, comes down to pride. Because again, we're smarter than everyone else. We know better than everyone else. So again, pride is something that can keep us from giving God control of our lives. Maybe here's another one. Here's another one that might get in the way, and that's guilt. Maybe we are just so filled with guilt that we just are like, you know what, I, 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 I can never repair this whole thing with God, and so there's no use even trying, so I'm just going to live my life the way I want to live it. You know, in Psalm 40, verse 12, it says, For troubles surround me, too many to count. My sins pile up so high I can't see my way out. They outnumber the hairs on my head, and I have lost all courage. Wow, does that feel like you? You know what? Each and every one of us today watching this, listening, we've all messed up. And the temptation to think is, That because we've messed up, that God has given up on us. I want you to know today that I'm so glad that you are here with us today. That I'm I'm glad that you're here because you have taken the time and you've realized that, you know what, I can't allow my guilt, the sins that are too many to count, that pile up so high, that you haven't taken the route here of what the psalmist has written, though. You have decided today that that you are going to try to find a way out. And of course, we know that the way out is Jesus Christ. That's what we're going to celebrate this next week, is that the way out is, is the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for our sins. And so, yeah, we've messed up, and yeah, our guilt can sometimes get in the way of us giving God control, but I want to encourage you today, if maybe you're in that place and you're trying to get out of it, just to remember that God has forgiven you and that he has given you a way out. You know, another thing that can stand in the way is worry. Worry can stand in the way as well of us letting God take control of our lives, of us giving up control so that we can have self-control. You know, sometimes we we focus on a lot of things in our lives that that take our focus off of God. We've talked about this a lot over the last couple of weeks, especially uh, last week we talked about peace and Travis talked about joy a couple of weeks ago. We, we've talked a lot about how worry can overwhelm us. And in this moment that we're in, it is very easy for us to allow that to happen. And, and when we worry, when our focus is only on worry, then we are going to try to control the situation that we're in. Because we think that's the only way it can get resolved, is if I take it by the horns and I try to control it. You know, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, Jesus said this, So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Amen to that, right? I mean, everything that we're going, to, going through, it, it's, it come, we have to handle it a day at a time. Worrying about tomorrow, it, it, it can become overwhelming. Just focus on the situation that you're in at hand. You know, anxiety uh, tends to rise up and grow in our lives when we focus on what happened yesterday and we focus on what happened tomorrow as well as trying to look at what's happening today. I'm not saying that we shouldn't look back and we shouldn't look forward. We should plan. We should learn from things in our past. But the problem is, is that so often it, we dwell and we live there. And when we do that, our worries grow, and then we feel like we have to take control of everything. 
We will never have self-control when we are trying to control everything else. Okay? You know, there's a lot of this going on right now with the COVID-19. There's a lot of, out, there's a lot of scenarios in this outbreak that's going through our heads. We should, we should think through things, but not let things control us. You know, another thing that can stand in the way of finding self-control is this one, and that's fear. Wow, that's, that's one where maybe a lot of people are at right now. You know, God provides ways out, but we have to let go. Sometimes we're holding on to a worry or a problem in our life, that control that we want to have. We're holding on to it so hard that we aren't then proceeding to take the route that God provides to get out of that because we're so worried about holding on to control. Self-control is letting go of control. Now let me say that again. Self-control is letting go of control. See, here's something that's important to to remember. You are never in control. You might think you are. (laughs) You know, as as a parent, I've realized as as my kids are getting older, I I thought I was in control, but it was kind of a facade. It was kind of uh, a mirage, right? It looks like you're in control. You are, but you are never in control. You are always being controlled. And the question is, by whom or by what will you be controlled? Will it be fear, guilt, worry? Well, are those things controlling you right now? Have you given permission? And you may, you may think that you haven't done it, but believe me, we all have given permission to someone or something to control us. See, real freedom, if we're talking about freedom, if we're trying to find self-control, real freedom comes in deciding who will control you. See, there, there's no getting around the fact that, that of getting controlled. You're going to get controlled by someone or something. But freedom comes in deciding who that will be. And that's the choice that you have to make here in the middle of everything that's happening. You know, in John chapter 8, verses 34 through 36, Jesus said this, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. See, real freedom comes in choosing who your master will be. As Jesus said there in verse 34, he said that we are, if we sin, that we are slaves to sin. But he has come in order to give us the option, the choice, of a new slave master. Of a new slave master who cares about those that he owns. Who who gives his life for those that he owns. Who takes care of those who he owns. And that slave master is, of course, Jesus himself. He has given you the freedom to choose him to be your master. Will you choose to do that? You know, another, another thing that often stands in the way of self-control is doubt. Doubt can be one that can also get in the way. In Mark chapter 9, verse 24, it says, The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Wow, does that sound similar to many of us, right? I do believe, but I've got this, this little piece of me. That stands in the way. And, and so through doubt, <laughs> wow, if, if we doubt, that can stand in the way of us having self-control. Because then again, we think we have to control it. See, we often don't let go because we just don't have enough faith. But I have hope for you. If that's you in the middle of all this, where you think, I've just got a little bit of faith and I just can't let go. I want you to know that only a little faith is needed. In Matthew chapter 17, Jesus Reminded us of that. Jesus told them, you don't have enough faith? I tell you the truth, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move, and nothing would be impossible. See, it is not the size of your faith, but it is the size of your God that will dictate the direction that you're going in your life. It's not the size of your faith, but it's the faith, it's in whom you're putting your faith in. See, you could have giant faith, but if you put that giant faith in the wrong place or in the wrong person or in the wrong thing, it's not going to get the right result. Unfortunately, I think many of us have done that through all of this. 
And we see it even around the world. We're putting our faith in places that won't bring us the ultimate results. It's not the size of your faith, but it's the size of your God. Who are you putting your faith in? Because see, the first step to getting control, right? The first step to getting control is giving it up. That's the first step. Here's the second thing you need to do. Let God's word direct you or direct me. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. See, the Bible, it's not a nice word or a piece of advice. It's the very words that are breathed by God. They are expressed by God, by the one who made you. See, the Bible teaches us, it teaches us what is true. That's, that's the first thing we need to remember, is that it teaches us what is true. When we read the Bible, when we, when we look in His Word, we can know that what's being told to us in here is going to stand the test of time, and then it's right every time. You know what? The Bible also does something else. It also shows us where we are wrong. And you know what? We need that in our lives. I need that. I need God to show me where I'm wrong because I want to be better. I want to be a better person. I want to be a better dad, a better husband. I want to be a better pastor. I just want to be a better person, right? I need to know where I'm going wrong so that I can go on a new path. And that's what the Bible does. It, it, His word shows us where we are wrong. And then here's what it does as well. It shows us how to get right, to stay right, so that we can do right. Let me say that again. It shows us how to get right, stay right, so we can do right. We get right by putting our faith in Jesus Christ, and it's through Him that our sins are forgiven. And then we stay right by allowing the Holy Spirit to take control of our lives, like we're talking about today with the fruits of the Spirit, that He would help us to stay right and keep us and control us. And why is that? So that we can do right. You know, in this series, we've talked about what we believe, We've talked about how we think, how we act, and what we do. And that's what's happening here. We get right and stay right so we can do right. You know what? Self-control is not only about the discipline to stop doing things we shouldn't, but also about the discipline to do the things that we should. You know, one of the the bad raps that that the church and Christians are often given, and, and I think in some cases it's true, is that we tend to focus on what not to do. Don't do this, don't do that. And while the scripture clearly has, God clearly is showing us that there are things that we shouldn't do, the Bible gives us tons of things that we should do. And, and, and in the middle of this, this outbreak, I want you to not only focus on God growing you and keeping you from doing things, but also what are some things through discipline, through self-control, that you can now do to affect and change the lives of others and love others. I, I know here a few weeks ago, everybody was hoarding, hoarding food. Maybe now God, through self-control, is saying, hey, trust in me. Maybe you need to take some of that food to somebody else. You've got enough. Give, give to somebody else. Maybe that is something that he wants to do in you. That's a way for self-control, the Holy Spirit to control you and to give you self-control. You know, the third and final thing to, quote-unquote, get control is to let God's people encourage me. Now this one's a little tricky right now, especially this verse, Hebrews 10. It says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You know, these are challenging times right now to meet. But, you know, I, I've been very grateful through all of this that we have the tools that we have. If this had happened 10 years ago, the situation uh, with quarantine and everybody staying home, like it has throughout history and, and other periods, uh, it would be much harder to stay connected. It'd be really hard to stay connected. As a matter of fact, what we're doing right now, this live stream, <laughs> it wouldn't have happened 10 years ago. So we're, we ought to be grateful for that, that we have technology and ways to stay connected. See, if we want to grow, if we, want to, if we really want to grow, we have to stay connected to other people. 
And you can do it through a lot of ways. I know this week it was neat. I was able to video message with my mom and my brother in Florida. We have that great tool. Um, there, are, uh, there are all kinds of apps out there that you can connect with one another. I know we have several groups that are using conference calls and the Zoom app. There are ways to stay connected in the Word together, even in the midst of everything that's going on. I know even on Wednesday night, we're doing Life Group Live, and that is a way for us to stay connected in the Word together. Hearing from other people, Travis and I, hearing from other people about the Word, that helps us to grow. It is so important for us, if we're going to find self-control in our lives, to connect and grow with other people. So the question I have for us in all this is, what will self-control look at home look like at home with your kids, your spouse, or even on your own? What is self-control going to look like? Is it going to be about you while you're in your self-quarantine, your social distancing? Or will you try to find ways to love your family, your spouse? And even if you're on your own and you're by yourself, are there ways that you can show love to others? I know we have a a wonderful lady in our church named Iris who is making phone calls every week to, uh, to, I would say, about a dozen or so people in our church making sure that they're taken care of. What a wonderful way to stay connected with others and to help each other in the middle of all this. What is something that you can do right now to reach out and to love people, um, even in the situation we're in? You know, the key idea, the idea this week is this. I have the power, and this is, a, this is the most important part, right? I have the power through Christ to control myself. Notice it's not my own willpower. It's not my emptying myself out. It's allowing myself to be filled by Christ, by the Holy Spirit, so that I can be changed and so that I can be transformed. So again, I want to encourage you this week. I want to encourage you to let go. I want to encourage you to give God your life, to give up control and to let God sit in the driver's seat instead of you. If you really want to have self-control, you've got to let go of being in control. And so that is our challenge for you this week, for me this week. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, God, we come before you and we realize that all too often we try to control everything. We try to control people. We try to control our circumstances. And God, right now we're in the middle of a moment where a lot of things aren't in our control and while this, this virus is, is just such a horrible thing, God, I know that you want to use it to teach us that we aren't in control, that we have to rely on you. God, help us to do that more this week. God, help us to be self-controlled by giving up control, by putting you first and then others. God, that we wouldn't focus so much on our own sinful nature and about our own selfishness, but instead that we would become selfless. And that we would be focused on you and others. God, I thank you for your word today and what it's taught us and what it's challenged us to do. God, help us to find self-control, not for our own betterment, but God, by ourselves being under self-control, we will enhance the lives of others and it will bring joy to your heart to know that it's not about us, but it's about you. God, again, we thank you for your son Jesus here on this Palm Sunday. As we celebrate his arrival into our lives, God, we pray that this week that his arrival into our hearts would result in a greater sense of self-control. God, we love you. We thank you for your son and for all that he's done. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, something I wanted to do uh, at the end of this message here for this week is, is I know that being online and watching this, this service online, sometimes it can kind of be hard to respond, but we've had a lot of people uh, watch this service who don't attend our church, and maybe there are a few of you even watching today that have never given your faith, never put your faith in Jesus Christ. The most important thing that I can ever tell you, that anybody in this world could ever tell you, is that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, that he loves you with just this overwhelming love that he was willing to come into this dark world and to teach us and to love us and to ultimately die for us so that our sins could be taken away. And so today I want to encourage you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. And if you're ready to make that choice, if you're ready to make that decision, I would like to talk with you about that. 
At the very end of our service today, we have a, we'll have a little slide that talks about how you can contact us. But, but I want to just remind you today that, that you can contact me anytime. My number is 765-541-0523. Or you can contact our church's email at ccecc at 4c.church. Let us know that you've made that decision and let us help you take these first steps in your walk with Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. And again, uh, join us tonight at 6 o'clock for our online prayer service and Wednesday for Life Group Live. And stay connected with others. And let's be the church. Just because we're not in this room, the church is not here, but we have now been deployed. I've seen that meme a lot this week. We've now been deployed to go out into the world and be the church. So let's do that this week. God bless you.